Oh, I believe we have it right here. The governing body for California high school sports released a statement this morning. It reads in part a very lengthy uh, statement. Do we have the board? Throw it up if you do. If not, the California you know, has determined with our the, 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 will begin a modified season of sports schedule. We've been talking about this for some time. Let's just go to the graphic. Here is the, uh, this is the CIF. They sent out, okay, this is when the state playoffs are gonna begin in all these sports. Now it's up to the individual districts and divisions to come up with a schedule that meets this playoff criteria. I believe I have that accurately, and I know somebody who knows it better than I do. Mr. Joe Hines, the newly anointed CIF commissioner here in San Diego, is joining. Uh, Joe, did you think the job was going to be this much fun this early? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to have it any other way, Paul. I'm definitely excited about taking on the challenge. All right. I, I am not the smartest cookie in the, in the bucket. So uh, when I saw that press release, my, I just my eyes glazed over. I, I, it looked like it was written by an attorney. So decipher, decipher it for me. Do I have that right? We're going to try to push all the seasons in the, in the back half of the year? Yeah, Paul, well, for the most part, you're correct. And, and obviously, these are challenging times in our state and country. And I think all of our goals are getting back to sense, some sense of normalcy here and getting schools back in session. But with that being said, um, you know, we, we spent countless hours working with the 10 section commissioners, our state executive director, Ron Chetty, and associate executive director, Brian Seymour, on a plan that is most realistic here based on our current situation in the state of California here. I mean, not putting unrealistic dates out there, but but putting hopefully a timeline that works. Um, you know, obviously it's going to come with some challenges in, in moving two seasons or three seasons into two, um, but it's a plan that we are going to move forward with here um, starting in, you know, I'm sure you had the graphic up there on the board uh, with it with a all all of our sports offerings happening in the spring. Well, let's throw, um, that, let's throw that graphic up really uh, again if we can the, the the graphic with all the playoffs for the sports. Tell us how this is going to work. Is I guess everybody's most concerned about football. So we're going to have the playoffs in April. Am I? That's the that's when the section playoffs will occur. Or the yeah, and so and so I, I heard you're kind of opening and, and to, just to, to be as simple as possible, hopefully put it in easy terms that everyone understands. The state put out a calendar with respect to uh, state playoffs, and we appreciate the state. Um, they limited their amount of playoff time down to one week to allow maximum flexibility for each of the sections. But that does incorporate our, our section playoff date that we need to work around to be able to have our teams qualify for the state playoffs. But working backwards, Paul, we're going to put together, and each section can put together a calendar that best meets the needs of that section. So for us, we're looking at an anticipated start time of December, mid-December, approximately December 14th, for our practices to begin. Um, that would mean our contest can begin for all of our uh, sports that we identify as fall sports, and it's going to be very similar to what the state has out there. Um, would start at the end of December. We're anticipating our first football game beginning um, January 8th. But, uh, you know, more importantly for us as a section and for each section, we need to go back and look at what works best for all of our sports. And that's going to require us, Paul, to work with all of our coaches' advisory groups, our, our CIF section governance, our athletic directors, to put together a San Diego section master calendar that works best for, again, us as a section but also keeps in mind that state and playoff dates that are required here for all of our teams. So we're hoping to have a, you know, get all this feedback from, again, not only our coach advisory, but it's going to affect some official associations. Oh, so we need yeah. their input. Well, but we'll, we'll need to have a, 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 hopefully a draft master calendar for the San Diego section. Red, our goal is to have that ready after we get all the feedback from all of our key stakeholders here and hey, have that draft calendar for San Diego ready August 14th, Paul. Joe, let, uh, we, we got two minutes here, and I want to get through some topics, so uh, brevity is, uh, in answers would be appreciated. Not all sure. schools are created equal. You're going to have venues that are going to be now – like a football field is needed for track, blah, blah, blah. There's coaches that coach in both in multi-sports or athletes that compete in multi-sports. How, how are you going to solve? Let, let's just take the resource question. Venues. Correct. How, how, how are you going to handle absolutely. that? Absolutely. Well, and that's the importance of us taking the time and not doing making the decisions or planning for these calendars in isolation, Paul. We definitely have to get the feedback from folks. Um, we understand that it's definitely going to come with some challenges. Um, but, again, we're, that's why we're taking our time over the next couple weeks to make sure we hear all the input from, again, our schools, all of our coaches, advisories, all of our key stakeholders to put a plan together. But, you know, it, this plan that we're looking at, even in two seasons, 
is a much better alternative than what we'd be facing in, in potentially canceling another sports season. But again, at the end of the day, Paul, it's going to allow for full seasons of sports, even though it's in only two seasons. It's going to, it's going to allow for two full seasons of sports for, for each of the sports that we offer, and that was our number one priority. How about for the blue chip kids that are going to say, hey, this is not going to work for me, and, and they just blow it off and, and move on to what, whatever's next in their life? What do you, is it, are you aware that that's likely to happen yeah. in some cases? It is, and again, not without going into too much detail, Paul, and keeping it simple, yes. Uh, I think the NCAA is trying to still figure out what they're going to do with their sports seasons. Um, there are some elite athletes that have you know, had been very successful and are in scholarships and can be you know, mid-year transfers that are going to have to make some tough decisions with their families on whether they're going to stick around or go. But for the most part, we're looking at you know, a, a calendar that's going to work for all of our athletes. And again, those are going to be some tough decisions that those families have to make along the way here, Paul. And isn't there a little fairness issue? Like club sports are allowed to continue while high schools are on pause. Isn't there a little inequity there? Well, Paul, I think there's a big gray area that's happening out there. And again, um, you know, we, we understand the value of club and, and travel sports. Um, there's still a lot of, again, uncertainty around the state. It, it, you know, Orange County, Riverside, they've come out with some pretty clear guidance of what's allowed and what's not. At this time in the state of California, even in San Diego, um, competitive sports or competitions are not permitted in any capacity. So as of now, again, you know, those are things that are out of our control, Paul. What we need to focus on, again, is putting all our attention to working on this master calendar and making sure that on December 14th we have a calendar that's ready to go for all of our student-athletes. But again, you know, keeping in mind, Paul, that ultimately is going to be the decision of the state and county uh, state and uh, county health departments as to whether uh, you know you know athletics are permitted to continue. Well, that's where I want to finish this up, Joe. Then, because the, there was in this press release, there were a, a, num a numerous outs and just my perusal of it. There's no guarantee that any of this is going to happen, right? I mean, the way it's set up, divisions, districts, they all have, an, they can all go their own way. This could end up being a colossal mess, could it not? That, that, that's the hopefully, Paul, the, the, the angle we're not trying to take. I think that's part of the reason we pushed all this to spring. We're all hoping that, that by that time, uh, you know, by December, we have a green light to go. Uh, again, it's going to be each, up to even at that time if the state gives us, uh, you know, a, a, the state health gives us permission to, to start sports. It's going to be up to each individual school or district, you know, to be able to say, yes, we, we adhere to that and we're going to start. So, you know, taking into consideration our whole, our whole section, Paul, you know, we have regions out in Imperial Valley and some on Riverside that are, that are having a lot tougher time with us. So we're hoping in that window and time we can get going, um, things get a lot better here and, and we can start with all of our schools being able to participate. Joe, you're never going to forget your first year in the command uh, <laughs> capsule. This is, uh, wow, I can't imagine walking into this. This is just, uh, who could have predicted this? Mr. Hines, we always appreciate the fact that you make KUSI your first stop and first port of call with, on big days like this. And uh, trust me, it is very much appreciated by all our viewers. Paul, thanks for bringing us on. And we're hoping we can make this happen here. We're excited again for the potential for all of our families, kids, and schools here in the San Diego section. All right, Joe, uh, I know you have much work to do. We'll let you get to it. Joe Hines, you, the Paul. newly anointed CIF San Diego commissioner with the task of trying to condense multi-season, a year's worth of, a year's, a calendar's worth of sports into one portion of the year. It's going to be quite the challenge.